Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video are these DIY extra large picture frames. If you've ever looked into oversized artwork, you know they're very expensive. So I'm going to show you what I did to make these on a budget and also where I was able to get the prints done inexpensively. As usual, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Be sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video every Friday. With that said, let's get right into the video. I'm making each of my frames to fit 40 by 40 inch prints and the frame width one and a quarter inch wide. I purchased two eight foot lengths one by three select pine boards, one for each frame and one sheet of one eighth thick tempered board. One sheet is enough for both frames. You can pick these up at any home improvement store, but if you go to Home Depot, they'll cut it for you. I cut each board 42 by 42 inches. This allows one inch on each side for the frame. After searching multiple sites for the most cost-effective way to do these images, I decided on using Zazzle.com. Photo prints as large as this are usually considered a custom size and cost hundreds. So using this matte poster paper and with their discount code, it cost me only $32. I sized the photo to 20 by 20 and added white space around it up to 40 by 40. And I also changed the photo to black and white. I did this using Canva, but you can use any editing software. It's very simple to do. I first cut the boards in half. Shorter lengths are a lot easier to work with. I then measured and marked at the halfway point. One by three boards are actually, in fact, one by two and a half. So I put a mark at one and a quarter. Before making the cuts, you want to make sure that the blade is exactly on that one and a quarter mark and that you adjust and set the fence before you start. We made these cuts very slowly, making sure to press it against the fence so we get a nice straight cut. Once I had all four pieces done, I clamped them together and cross cut them together. I first cut the edge off on one side, then measured 42 inches and cut the other side. Now that they were all exactly the same length, I went ahead and did a 45 degree miter cut on each side. I cut two pieces together and you just want to make sure you line them up all in the same direction. Once I had all the corners cut, I used a sanding sponge and just cleaned it all up. I stuck them together using wood glue and painter's tape to hold them together until they were completely dried.
The next day, I sanded off any excess glue to make sure the corners were completely smooth. Then cleaned up with a tack cloth and spray painted. You can use any color you like. I used the black in a matte finish. I did all the sides first, then after a few minutes, did a light coat on the top since most of it is already covered by the overspray from the sides. I left them to dry overnight and found they still had a bit of a sheen, so I lightly sanded with a very fine grit sanding sponge and cleaned it up again with a tack cloth. As part of my living room makeover, I wanted to do two extra large frames on this wall that was previously wallpapered. It's actually the only blank wall in this space. So with limited wall real estate, I didn't just want to do any artwork. I wanted to do something that was a little more meaningful. If you don't know or you can't tell from my accent, I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago. I migrated to the US in 2010 and for most of that time, I have been away from my family. In 2017, my dad passed away unexpectedly in a vehicle accident. While I was there making funeral arrangements, it was the first time my brothers and I had been together in years. My dad lived on and took care of a family estate. And while we were there, we took some photos. So in honor of his memory, I'm using two of those shots. I took this photo of teak trees that I remember him planting when they were very small. Just looking at how big they had gotten and remembering that time so many years ago was pretty overwhelming. Now it's time to mount the prints. I went through my house to locate as many weights and heavy books I can find. Some old college textbooks came in super handy. using Mod Podge, a chip brush, and a good old-fashioned rolling pin. It's the only thing I could put my hands on that would help me with rolling out the air bubbles. I applied a thin line of glue around the edges and worked in small sections. I would say this was probably the most challenging part of this project. I had these prints sandwiched between the two boards for a couple of days to smooth them out. But because they're so large, Getting it to lay completely smooth took some doing.
If you want to really amp up the look and feel of your photos, I highly suggest this wireless picture light. It's easy to install, works with a remote and has tons of cool features. I've put a link in the description so you can grab one if you like. They come in black, gold and silver. And that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspired you to go do it yourself. If I can do it, you can too. See you next time. Bye.